Well, this is our first uh, DVD for, uh, to support our new product called uh, Axe Mask. Don't say that three times in front of your parents. But uh, what we've done is we've taken a lot of uh, basic elements and stuff and allowed the individual and the artist to take these components and use them on a guitar. The one we're going to be working with today is based off of a, a World War II theme, uh, a Curtis P-40, and uh, reminiscent of uh, the world famous uh, Flying Tigers. And so what we're going to do is start with the placement of the mask and we're going to start with the mouth and the eyes first. Okay, and a lot of the guitars with a bolt-on body, it's not going to be that big of a deal because you're not going to have the neck assembled to the, the guitar when you're setting up the mask and it'll lay over the neck pocket area with no problem. But when you're dealing with the neck through, what I like to do is get as close as I can to the corner of the fretboard and I mark that and what I'll do is I'll go like diagonal between that intersection of where the line from this side of the fretboard meets with the end of the fretboard coming this way. So you'll notice I've got like a 45 degree cut right there. This allows me to fold this side down and get a really nice tight graphic edge up against the edge of the fretboard. And the same thing here along the back. Now because the fretboard is protected with tape, I can take my razor blade and lightly score and just leave enough of the material so that it protects the gap along the edge of the fretboard. All right. So now I can take this. Actually, first thing I want to, this is another thing here is working with the pickups. If you've got pickups that are going in here, what I like to do is kind of just draw the placement of where this is. If you rub it hard enough with your finger, you can, depending on how dirty your hand is, you can usually see the crease that you, you put in there, but just kind of mark that. Then we're going to take a razor blade and just cut along it. Try not to cut into the top part of the body. Immediately, a lot of the area there would be covered by the pickup ring, but this particular guitar isn't going to have a pickup ring. So I'm just going to peel this out and just stick it up here for now until I get the rest of this done. Just remove the mask carefully. Not so bad up here in the flat parts, but when you have, uh, you got the bevels and stuff going on, usually you're not going to get all the same type of cooperation as you're going to get on a flat surface. So carefully remove the mask. The next thing I'm going to do is kind of feel where the back side of this cutaway is. Now I'm going to take the razor blade and just cut straight across through there. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to end up weaving both sides together after I get the other side applied. So right there, I'm just going to get that over like that. Same thing here. And we'll do all the integration of the mask on the back side after we're done marking it off. Now I'm going to grab the pickup. Whenever you're doing a pickup, active or non-active pickup. You want to make sure that the plastic uh, is prepped properly. And what I do is uh, I take a DA with uh, 320 and then go to 400 and I'll get all the masks. Some of the uh, EMGs and other active pickups with the plastic cover will have the embossed lettering. I generally will knock those down so it doesn't show up in the artwork. <clears throat> then I use uh, some plastic adhesion promoter to spray on top of those after they've been degreased and I go ahead and spray my first uh, ground coat color down. Make sure you get the pickup in the right way. Go ahead and get its relative position in there. And you're just going to kind of plop that mask right back down over top of that. All 
All right. So now we have the pickup done. Everything's masked off there. Once I get the flat side of the pickup done, and I'll come around here with just some nice sticky three quarter inch tape, and I'll try to bend that mask over and trap it behind that tape. And what that allows me to do is to continue this design down through the sides of the pickup so it looks good in case uh, some guitars that have a non uh, tremolo system, tunematic system, or a uh, Floyd Rose tremolo system that isn't recessed is going to set higher. Whenever you have a guitar that has a, a high profile in the pickup, you want to make sure that you got the mask transferring the design from the surface of the guitar to the flat surface of the pickup. And how I do that to keep it simple is I basically just go vertically from the the cut mark here in this position. I'm just going to go in here and draw these in so I have an idea of later on how I'm going to cut those out. Same thing here. I'm going to go vertically perpendicular to the surface of the guitar or the pickup. I'll mark the teeth. Get an idea. And when you're transferring it onto a pickup ring, which in this case would lie on the outer area, you would again do that with tape over the pickup ring and then do these same marks so that you make sure you get good transference of your line work to go over top of these plastic items. A lot of the designs you'd simply you could get away with just doing them on the front side, but some customers will want you to do it on the back side. So uh, what we can do is uh, you know, take these designs and flip them around so some of the orientation is either front or back. But I uh, wouldn't necessarily, you know, have to have this mouth on the back side. You could continue the camouflage pattern through the back along with the rivets and some of the seams in the panel of the sheet metal work. But because I like to make things difficult, I'm going to go ahead and put the one on the back side here. And I'm going to do my best to kind of get some uniformity of position, but it's not all that important. Get it perfect. Okay, laying down the flat side is a lot easier than doing the neck area there. Although we do have considerable scallop in the, the heel area of the guitar, it'll be tricky for us to, to lay out perfectly and get the alignment we might want. All right, I'm gonna start peeling this back. How lucky did I get? All right, now I'll split this element here. Split this. And just kind of lay those over and start getting some weaving going on here. This looks like a mess. I'm just going to line up some of these elements. You could spend a lot of time doing this and getting it exactly perfect. But I'm going to <clears throat> get the best fit here and then come back in and trim them out. Right there. Now 
Now some of this is scaled roughly an eighth inch, some of these lines, so if you needed to bridge over some of your repairs with blue tape, that would be fine too. Because I am going to do the camouflage first, what I'm going to do is just leave down all the protective area of the math and then unmask the area behind. Some of this stuff here is going to be done simply with tape so it'll be easier to just worry about it later and I'll just get it protected so that the camouflage doesn't destroy all the, the area in, in the mouth. I'll go over to the other side now and I'm going to remove again the outer portion of this. You could do it the other way uh, and you know having done your camouflage first and then done the mask for the mouth next but because I'm got a lot of things that I needed to coordinate like the gray, the underbelly of the plane being through here. I wanted to make sure that I had the placement of the mouth done in order for me to know what colors we're going to wear. So we're working from a couple of authentic photographs of this particular airplane for documentation and to help capture some of the elements and uh, give them a little bit more uh, respect and attention to detail that they do deserve. So now you can see how the mouth is weaved into the cutaway. Some of the teeth here, we'll just fold these over. This, we don't have a whole lot of masking on our hands. The masks are flat, but they do have quite a versatility when you know what to cut where, what type of reliefs you need to put in. You could use the heat gun to soften up some of it, but for what we're doing, this is going to be more than enough. Kind of looks like a whale, don't it? Like a shamu. And you can see how these pieces of tape are just helping to avoid contamination from the first couple colors that I'm going to throw down. We have them all protected now. Can you see all that? Mm -hmm. All right. Now I can go throw it in the booth. Do the colors. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do this area right here. I want to fold this into the Okay, I'm making sure that I've got this design running into the little area of the shelf here for the control cavity on this particular guitar. The guitars that have these recessed cavities, uh, you can go back in with a, I've seen it done with a electro uh, magnetic and the signal reducing uh, paint that has like a metal additive to it and uh, it will actually help uh, control noise level in the control cavity and oftentimes guys will come in here with a brush and counter brush that black all the way up to that edge so when the black cover goes back on it looks a lot cleaner. And let's put a couple pieces of tape on it just to keep them all down. This isn't even really necessary but after you've been painting motorcycles for so many years and little things like that details what the customers like to see sometimes. For this particular design, 
I went with a really loose free-handed camo tape, much like they would have done on the plane themselves with uh, larger spray guns. So we've got a really lot, lot of soft edging here with the transition between the, uh, the brown and kind of the khaki green and also the, uh, the lightish blue gray for the underbelly of the plane. I started off by spraying it uh, green, then I did the brown stripes, then I came back in with the gray in the end and then washed it across the bottom, basically horizontally across through the mouth. Now I've got all that done. What that's going to do is because it is so soft, it's going to give me a little bit of uh, no edge at all actually in the transition of the colors and that'll allow me to do some really nice crisp vector graphics over top of it from our Ask X X masks. <laughs> okay. Okay, so now that I've got all this stuff done, we're ready to start unpeeling masks. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to unpeel the areas where the white and both the red are. I'm going to leave the area that's black up here in this upper above the tongue here and below the teeth. I'm going to leave this completely intact. I'm going to start with peeling the white and I designed these so that they will stay for the most part together as an element making them easier to take on and off graphically. You're going to remove the area here around the, the pickup and also on the pickup. All right. Take the pickup out to do it. And I'm going to cut the line from where the teeth will go in there, as well as the line for the gum line. There's a couple different versions of this graphic that I found on my research and I like the one that had the red uh, going through the gum line all at the same time. I thought that uh, added a little bit more interest and uh, a little bit more focus on the graphic than simply uh, the black and the white. And as I'm cutting this stuff, I'm not going too deep, just deep enough to cut my mask. And some of this stuff I'm going to save. So I'm just going to keep all my little masking piece off to the side. Hopefully that works the way I want it to. And then finally I'm going to trim this last tooth here. And I'm going to save that as a graphic element leaving the black all protected. Now I'm going to peel up the mask for where the gum line is. We're going to put the white down, use that as our foundation for the red so you don't have to build up a whole lot of either color. And Put that back in, you can kind of see how that's going to go. Another thing too, I want to make sure I tape off this little tab here on the bottom of that pickup because I'm not having a pickup ring in order for the graphic to have continuity here, it's going to look best to tape up that stuff. I'm going to be using a shielding paint inside the, uh, the pickup control or the pickup cavity and that's going to help uh, some of the electric signal and uh, noise interference. Peeling up the teeth. And I'm going to put them in order down here. And come over and get this one here. Okay, I'll lay that back there for now. And then come down to the bottom row. The teeth, which should come up pretty much in one big piece. And we will be replacing this one. So be very careful just to make life easier on yourself to try to keep it intact. Try not to stretch it out too much. I'm going to put this one right here. <clears throat> now I'm going to come in here and just extend a few little lines with the razor blade. 
get started. Oops. And again, I'm going to leave that black part down. Okay, now I'm going to do the eye real quick while I'm here. I'm going to unfold some of this when it's up further. Uh, okay, the eye. I'm going to do the whites of the eye. And I'm going to do that part of the eye red. I'm going to peel it out now. And that will leave the mask around it, protecting the black. It's kind of tedious. And I'm going to carefully remove the brown tape that I used here to kind of fill up some of the gaps. And I'm just going to try to make best sense out of this as I unmask it. Really no written rule. It's a matter of hit and miss a lot of times with the uh, alignment of these going from the front to the back. So this will help me clean this up. I can remove the rest of this part of the tooth as we listen to the goats scream in the background. All right. <clears throat> Don't try this at home if you're going to get confused. <coughs> I'm going to put uh, some transfer tape. Actually, you know what? I gotta leave this off here because I'll end up damaging that. And I'm gonna label this part here just so I know. This is the front tongue. So I'll put FT down there for front tongue. So I make sure I don't confuse that with the other pieces on the other side, which we're gonna go to now. Ding. Alright. Start by removing the brown tape. It'll be a little easier for us to see what we got to take off and what stays. black line will stay down and start by removing the tongue. We can mark it as we go. Just little initials, this would be back tongue, BT. And then we're just going to peel that off. And we're going to put that down there, keep it ready for the next step. Now we're going to remove the teeth up top. All right, and I'm going to put those on the neck. I'm going to label them. So I can remember where they go. And see, this black is going to stay down. And I'm going to rework that mask a little bit so it meshes with the teeth on the other side a little better. Get rid of this excess stuff. Don't need that floating around in your paint. And cut it off here. And then I'm going to take out the eyeball. And place it on the neck just to have it available later. And now we can take out the gum line, which again could just be eighth inch tape in this case. 
if it's easier for you to work with. Okay, all I'm doing right now is masking off the rest of the guitar just to protect it while we're spraying our other colors. And because I have my edge of my mask in here, it's easy to just take your fingernail and run it along the edge to see where you're going to be separating and protecting your camouflaged artwork that you sprayed earlier. And we're going to just cut lightly along above this line that we're embossing with our finger. And below it, in this case up here, I'm just going to scribe. I'm not cutting all the way through, I'm not putting a whole lot of pressure on. And I'm going to now go across the bottom, just above our scribed line, put in there by our thumbnail. Now I can come in here and peel this right off. And I'm just going to kind of continue that line right across there like that. <clears throat> and peel that. And just lay that down there. Just like that, we're going to protect all that as well. Take some tape. Go ahead and protect the rest of our light blue gray on that side. And then you just fold the mask around, kind of crease itself, and it'll help lock it into position there because we're going to be using a very direct light application with a smaller spray gun we'll be able to control a good portion of our overspray just like that and the same thing again here on the back side And working into the heel of the guitar here, I'm going to have to put a few relief cuts in the mask and then come back in with some three quarter inch loose tape and protect the rest of it. Put another piece down here near the cutaway to tighten everything up. Sometimes when you get the stretch in the uh, mask, it might not want to take shape as easily as you'd like and therefore I don't like to risk it and I will oftentimes where the stress is too great on the, on the mask, I'll just go ahead and use loose tape like for these areas here. We'll just go and fold that right down in there. And I'll tape some of this back off again with two inch down into those areas. Or three quarter inch, I'm sorry. I'm 
mask up here like this. Make sure nothing's exposed. I'll go in and spray it. And we'll come back and do the rest of the detail. How's that sound? Okay, now that I've got the white on here, gone in here, sprayed it all white, it's all dry. You can see the upper teeth are formed here by the mask that's protecting the black. So, all I'm going to do here is take this tape and go around and tape off the area on the upper gum line that was previously protected by an eighth inch piece of tape. But because we're using this round of the white as our foundation, I'm going to go ahead and just use that because the shape is defined by this mask over here. So now I've got this taped off and the red will be sprayed in there. We're just placing the mask roughly an eighth of an inch above the area where the tape is protecting the black. I'm just folding the teeth right up into there. out of this tooth. Get to lay down nice. Okay. Now I'm going to hand cut a couple teeth down into this area. side. I'm taking the, the old marking start there in that corner. I'm just going to bring the teeth right around. And because they are almost segmented, it's easy for them to, to get the alignment back in there. You can almost adjust as you go individually on the tooth push it down if your curve starts getting a little bit off. And push them down real nice. And then we're going to cut the last two. <clears throat> I'm also going to kind of simulate, <clears throat> excuse me, where the uh, the propeller would be on this. So I'm going to pull this back, rip some of this mask back, and do a lot of it by hand. But same time, I still want to 
be able to protect everything else is on there without having to remask it. So and all I'm going to do is just run tape up like this. Like so. And on the back, I'm just going to bring it straight down. Now we're just going to take it into the booth and put a little red on it and call it uh, about done with the mouth. Then we'll come back in and unmask it and then we'll start adding some of our other details, insignias and such, rivets, sheet metal masking. A lot of it will be done freehand, but uh, a lot of it will be uh, done with the mask as well. Okay, now we're simply going to unmask it. Forgot to do the eyes. Right now I've just got some simple lines just to break up some of the details here. I'm just going back in with the black. And we're going to enhance some of the little little attention things here, a little detail action. We need to get a little paint in here. Now we're going to take some inch and a half tape and we're going to start gritting out some segments. Kind of help us to lay down some of the uh, little detailed mask that we're going to be using here in a little bit. And I'm going to bust it up, kind of having in mind what I want to do. But I'm using the tape uh, simply because it won't require any extra masking if you're keeping your airbrush nice and tight. And I'm kind of going for about a sixteenth of an inch here, as far as the line size. Any place where there's going to be like an intersection or a, a change in the direction of the panel, I'm going to go ahead and use tape to protect from overspray running past that way to the grooves of the mask. And I think I'm going to throw a line right here so I can run vertically down that way. Now I'm just going to take the paint just lightly blow it in there. I'm not going to try to really create a really heavy edge with the black. 
Now before you get too carried away and start removing all your masks, I'm just going to take off the end pieces here and I'm going to create a little bit of dimension by offsetting this just a hair. Go ahead and reattach that end just to protect the overspray. Grab the black again and I'm only going to just give a little, uh, really just a light haze right across there so it doesn't totally wipe out what we did first pass. You see I gave it a nice little beveled effect. And the same thing here now. Looking through this tape is a little more difficult. So what we could do is take a quarter inch. Since we have roughly an eighth inch established, all we have to do now is put this down like that. And I'm going to mark where the end here is first so I can see where that is. And I'll go ahead and tape off the top protecting that and also protection down here on the end. Now I'm going to go ahead and do some vertical lines, kind of almost like a little bit of maybe grime and grudge coming up through the uh, sludge, I guess. What's that cross between grunge and sludge? <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to come down to the, bring a little bit of staying, just a little bit of a, a shadow, maybe some of the areas a little more harsh. We'll do some of the weathered effect now, as well as going back in and enhancing it a little bit later. Okay, I think I'll do this one first to kind of establish this. Okay, we'll just reuse a lot of our tape over again since we're dealing with these straight lines. Bring that one over and across like that. Grab the brush. And decide which way you're going to kind of have your light source. So I'll kind of picture maybe this way doing vertical, you're going to do one side light and one side dark. There, like that. And we'll wrap this bottom edge here in a little bit. We just want to continue this stuff around first. And just as I'm spraying, I'm kind of just aiming right at the edge of the tape. Just enough to give you a little dimension there. <clears throat> now for this one, again, we'll take quarter inch tape. Line it up off the shadow side. The edge of the shadow on the right. And we're just going to hit that. And we still need to put a piece of protective tape on the right side. Just to keep the overspray from building up on that opposite edge of the tape. I'm just going to give it a quick wisping of the airbrush. Nothing here that we're doing requires a whole lot of 
ability with the airbrush, just a little bit of control and maybe a little bit of practice with the brush and you'll be fine doing every bit of this. Now we're going to start messing with some of the rivet details. With this particular uh, paint job, I'm using a loose hand shield to do all my stenciling. And there's a you know, variety of stencils available. Uh, we made this one up and it was actually laser cut uh, on this material here, a mylar material. You could add a highlight when you're all done, but uh, you know, typically uh, I, I have been using uh, vinyl mask uh, for my rivets and stuff. I generally lay them all out at one time, that way I can get the interval spacing correct on it. Uh, and this particular method is just kind of like an eyeballing of position, which, you know, it's no big deal, that's fine. But um, I think of all these videos here that we're putting together here as of late, you'll notice that uh, I was much younger, and so um, as you have seen me lately, it should be just testament to what raising uh, two teenage girls and trying to maintain your business will adversely have effect on your appearance. So uh, over the period of 15 years that this video was made, uh, I have grown a lot of gray hairs, that is for sure. But I still have this guitar. I played this guitar for about five years uh, in a band I was in. I never sold this one. This was uh, one of my early uh, neck through prototypes that I had done. And uh, I should get it back on the road. I actually had a truss rod failure. Um, but now I've got that fixed, uh, I'll probably get it back. I'm going to have to repaint it completely because I had to replace the fingerboard on it. But um, maybe when I get to doing that, I'll do another feature uh, on the video so you guys can uh, check out how this thing has survived after all these years. And, and of course, you can see how I have survived after all these years. And, uh, all the grayness. So, anyways, a little bit of weathering uh, that's going to go vertically down off of these uh, rivets. Uh, and you can certainly make it as heavy as you want. Uh, there's really no rules or guide, guidelines on that, no matter of how distressed you want it to look. So, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, video of this particular guitar, the, the Warhawk. And, uh, is a Curtis P40 Warhawk, I believe is what it was. And um, very cool, very cool paint job and a very cool plane. So rock on.